Good evening. I'm Gloria and this is Open Minds Live Chat Show. It's a wonderful, wet and windy Sunday evening here in the UK and I do think it is Sunday. I have a very magical guest returning to the show. Um, I've, I've been trying to pronounce his name correctly and it's just gone out of my head. Taria? Yes, that's good. Oh, that's good. I did it. Yeah. Simonson. That's um, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the show. Welcome back. Thank you, Gloria. Nice for, uh, for me to be here. Yep, great. Now, we've got a lot to pack into tonight's show. Um, later on, guys, we'll be talking about um, his books. He's on um, a book tour at the moment. But first of all, I'm going to be very gentle with him. And just ask him very gentle questions. You need to tell me more about the esoteric realm, the magical phenomena that you've experienced that have really blown your mind, and the occult. No pressure. Over to you. <laughs> okay, just like that. Um... <laughs> oh, by the way, by the way, everybody, I've actually seen his aura. He had it on earlier on. I told him to take it off. Did it I not? Would, uh, yeah, it could be a bit uh, hurtful for the eyes of our yeah, yeah. It's this just, strong, it's strong. Too radiant. Aura, so, yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. I have no, to throw uh, that to we you. have uh, it's many ways, of course, to uh, talk about this. But uh, in, say, is, let's start with the Western tradition then. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, as a kind of side stream to the official philosophy in the West, uh, both the rationalism and the Christian tradition, we have the esoteric traditions. And mm -hmm. uh, they have a, a different um, ontology, to use the philosophical term, I'll get, get back to that, and also mm -hmm. a different epistemology and mm -hmm. uh, a different view of many things, really. Ontology is a, a Greek word, uh, to on, in Greek means to be. So what is the really, what is a being itself really about, mm -hmm. all about? That mm -hmm. is ontology. And the mm -hmm. esoteric tradition will uh, very often differ slightly, at least from, say, the mainstream philosophy, the mainstream religion there. Uh, and also uh, <clears throat> epistemology, uh, which uh, epistem, it's also Greek, means uh, knowledge, how we acquire knowledge, that mm -hmm. is epistemology. Mm -hmm. So both what being is really in itself and how we acquire knowledge about being, that mm -hmm. is different mm -hmm. in esoteric traditions. So uh, if you look at uh, some of the big esoteric tradition, for instance, hermeticism, um, mm -hmm. That is an old tradition coming from uh, Greek and Egyptian antiquity and uh, has as a kind of uh, what is called uh, the, the leading spiritual figure is a figure called Herme, Hermes Trismegistus, it means mm -hmm. Hermes the Trice Great, because he mm -hmm. mastered all these uh, antique um, traditions of magic, of uh, philosophy, and the big, say, traditions of, of, of knowledge and, and power. Uh, mm -hmm. So he was a kind of a magician, uh, probably uh, it's a mythical figure, but uh, uh, as a kind of literary de device in the Corpus Hermeticum, the Hermetic literature is very important and instructs mm -hmm. people in different branches of, say, occult and esoteric knowledge. And these mm -hmm. texts, they uh, are from antiquity, but they were um, rediscovered uh, during the Renaissance uh, because, uh, as we probably most uh, will know, Renaissance means rebirth. And mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in Quattrocento, which is the 14th century of Italian uh, Renaissance, they tried to somehow rebirth antiquity in a way because they admired so much the philosophy and uh, mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. their insights and also their esoteric insights. And mm -hmm. there was a great guy, he was a banker uh, in, that, um, in uh, Florence in that time. His name was Cosimo di Medici and he was extremely yeah. rich. He was a, a billionaire. But he used yeah. his 
billion quite uh, reasonably, at least in my view, because he supported uh, science and he supported literature and he supported mm -hmm. also the collection of old texts. So he sent about, I think it was 50 expeditions to, to trawl uh, the Near East and uh, mm -hmm. Turkey and Greece and, you know, Asia Minor for old, yes. uh, old texts. And especially yes. he was fond of text about philosophy and esoteric knowledge. And he mm -hmm. also made an academy in Florence at that time. It's called the Platani um, uh, Platonic Ac uh, Academy, uh, of course, mm -hmm. in honor of Plato, which mm -hmm. he admired greatly. And for that, um, to, to, to say, run that academy, <coughs> excuse me, um, he set a great philosopher and magician called Marsilio Ficino. Mm -hmm. And when these uh, hermetic, um, <coughs> oh, uh, sorry, uh, in the break, I'll have to fetch a glass of water here, I think. You can drink um, any It's fine. Excuse me? Oh, could I? I would drink any time. If you need a drink, get a drink. I've got one here. Okay, I will fetch my own here. Thank you. Yes. Guys, you've just got me drinking my water. I told you this would be fascinating this evening. I'm so interested in the field that he works in and that he studies and that he writes about. Um, it's all about me tonight. I just want the information. And especially with current times, how things are going. And he's back. Sorted. So I'll ask to uh, get the uh, audience forbearance here, but my throat was That's making okay. it impossible to continue. Well, yes, we are in Florence in Quattrocento, the 14th century, and uh, mm -hmm. the Platonic Academy has just been started by the banker, um, Cosimo de Medici, and it is run by the philosopher and magician Marsilio Ficino. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he got a hand of these texts, uh, the Hermetic Corpus, 15 old texts in uh, Greek, he translated them into Italian. Mm -hmm. And they became extremely popular by philosophers and theologians and uh, so. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, you know, we are in, the, say, at the brink of the modern era, and they mm -hmm. had just uh, learned how to print books. And, you know, yeah. because of the um, this new knowledge about how to, say, multiply literature mm -hmm. much more, you know, in all the times you have monks sitting in the monastery cells and uh, yeah. coping letter by letter by letter, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Yes, one by copy, very laborious work. But no, you yeah. if you first have made print plates, you can kachonk, 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 more mm -hmm. or less made, uh, make books. So uh, the Hermetic Corpus was spread all over Europe and become very influ influential. And it somehow also um, influenced uh, theology and philosophy and so. Uh, but the magical practices also, because uh, there is uh, magic in these texts, uh, went out of fashion because uh, not that far after we get this new uh, worldview called a mechanistic worldview. The uh, French philosopher René Descartes, he made a very strong di division between mind and matter, which we still yeah. have today. Yes, we, yes. we, we mm. just by uh, routine, we talk about mind and matter. This is back mm -hmm. to the, uh, um, uh, say, division made by uh, René Descartes. Later also mm -hmm. came the great British philosopher and scientist, uh, Isaac Newton, uh, and he was definitely a, a great uh, scientist we all should admire. But uh, all and he himself was very open to the esoteric and the occult and the use of didn't, lots and didn't lots. he um sorry to interrupt, but didn't he practice alchemy? Yes, he did practice alchemy. And yes. he also speculated quite a lot about biblical prophecies and uh, uh, several yes. esoteric things. Yes. But his what became the most influential uh, see, heritage from Newton was his uh, ideas about, say, space and time and uh, what constitutes our physical world. And there mm -hmm. were no, uh, no longer place for spirit in the physical world. Already Descartes had said there is no spirit in sticks and stones. And uh, even yeah. if uh, Newton himself was a very religious man, he somehow upheld that uh, Cartesian division. Yeah. So spirit become very lonesome, a ghost in the machine in our world. Yeah. Yeah. But 
uh, that is, say, the mainstream philosophy, but not so in the esoteric traditions. There they continued with their magic. They continued to say what is called uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, theurgy, uh, invoke spirits, you know, uh, uh, burning incense, meditation, prayer, and so. And also uh, still believing in the celestial uh, influence uh, astrology, stars influencing uh, mm -hmm. life on Earth, um, as mm -hmm. as the hermetic saying goes, as about as above, so below. Uh, you know, yeah. yes. So there is a continuum between the heavenly spheres and the earthly spheres, and that is part of the esoteric tradition. And uh, also in Britain, uh, late Victorian times, uh, this hermetic tradition uh, were also reactualized uh, and combined uh, also with Eastern systems of knowledge from Buddhism and and uh, and Hinduism, uh, but mainly it was. Um, European esotericism, it uh, went into what called the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. And uh, yeah. it was started by uh, three uh, Freemasons. Um, mm. And uh, they made rituals and they practiced magic. And uh, the, the order uh, encompassed uh, quite a lot of, say, cultural personalities, artists, mm. writers, yeah. uh, playwrights. Um, so so uh, via this uh, <clears throat> say hermetic order of the Golden Dawn, uh, the hermetic tradition was revived for modern times and uh, has lots of offspring in many directions. We cannot go yeah. into, possibly go into yeah. that. But uh, one of the say bad offspring is, of course, Alistair Crowley being a bit yeah. too much in love with his own ego. But we yeah. have beautiful, uh, beautiful parts of this tradition also. Uh, more after Diane Fortune, the greatest female occultist in the 20th century, I think it's fair to call. Uh, we have an order today called Servants of the Light, for instance, where you have yeah. to be of service to the benefit, the common yeah. good, and not to just uh, yeah. say gratify your own ego at the I'm expense with you. Can I can I interject there so i'm going to go back all the way back to and all the way through um especially to the the banker whose yes. descendants are still going on today were they interested in the magical or the alchemical part more so than the philosophy would you say uh, well, th that is a division that uh, is uh, more or less belonging to our time. I, th I would say they were equally interested in that because the, okay. it is a continuum, you know. You can't uh, have, a, if you have a glass, you know, this little glass of water here, you can't have the uh, inside without the uh, outside. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you. And I'm so, with you. So, so, so the, magic, the magic, the magic of the philosophy, sorry, yes. Um, so I'm sorry, I've got so many questions coming in now. Oh, yes, so definitely. it wasn't um, a, a suppressed in any way. You know, like many esoteric or spiritual scriptures from biblical times have yes. been suppressed, oppressed and hidden away. None of this was hidden away at all, no? Well, um, uh, not uh, say as um, what, what to say. There are some restriction because uh, one ah. and 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 I think that's also good because one uh, divided between say um, high magic, uh, spiritual magic, and uh, demonic magic. Uh, yes, and and that's so, where uh, I was going. Yeah. Yes. So uh, the Renaissance uh, uh, Renaissance magic is a white spiritual magic. They are not going to the graveyards. You know digging up uh, skeleton bits and making yeah, okay. kind of dolls and uh, uh, curses and uh, that stuff uh, yeah. that is uh, mm. that is uh, far below their dignity yeah. so they were uh, uh, how to elevate the earth how to cultivate uh, you know a human condition and uh, yeah. human spirit through to rituals. raise the consciousness of the human spirit Exactly. So, yeah. so, um, so they were very open to magic and uh, practicing magic, but in mm -hmm. say uh, uh, service of the light, not the dark part, uh, and not the left hand side, part. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I'm with you because we're looking at. I mean, there's been a lot of talk, and that's what you know. Our preacher, I said to you, it's been going on for eons now, but recent a lot of talk about um, the magical aspect of what's going on on the darker side of consciousness at the moment, the polarity we're in, mm. and ha uh, many are talking about, you know, it's how it's affecting society um, and communities and now the world, so to speak. Mm. Um, 
would you say that you know this this esoteric the, the darker side tradition has that power to control well, uh, you know, there is uh, certainly, uh, say, attempts to make, uh, uh, to take control. But yeah. uh, um, uh, as uh, one of the wisest persons in, uh, say, the esoteric traditions in Norway, his name was Marcelo Hogan. He uh, died in uh, 1968. Uh, he said mm -hmm. some uh, very wise words about that. He says, uh, there are no hypnotizers, uh, basically. They are uh, only hypnotized. So yes. if you dispense with your own agency, then you can become a victim of these forces. But as long yes. as you claim your own agency, think positive Brilliant. thoughts, you know, do your meditation, act as a decent human being, you know, I think that will not have p power over you. I Lovely. like to uh, compare, if you start to hang out with, uh, say, neo-Nazis or Islamists yes. or terrorists, you know, that yes. will influence you. They will gain yes. power over you. They will, uh, say, influence your thinking your behavior uh, and uh, mm -hmm. eventually if you are not careful you could turn into one yourself you know so Absolutely. just like that, yes so we are you're dealing with spiritual forces just the same rule you know seek out the yeah. company you want to be in the great buddhist yeah. masters the great christian mystics the great mm -hmm. sufi masters you know so mm -hmm. then you will be protected because your good intention works as a talisman uh, against these yeah. destructive forces I'm with you. If we could go back to that not very nice human being, Alistair Crowley. I mean, I studied him years ago and he's again, synchronistically, his name is coming up in podcasts everywhere and, and yes, everything yes. that I see. Um, I mean, the practices he turned to in the end, I mean, were just diabolical. Yes. And the elitists and the groups and the secret societies all followed that. It seemed to, in his era, it seemed to, that seemed to go on a surge, on an uptake, did it not? And they were, it was in plain sight. They were, he was writing books and telling everybody mm. this is what it is. Yes, it was part of what we could say, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> the start of the 20th century, in a way, it was the breakdown of uh, a Victorian world. And uh, so, um, also, it's kind of... Um, what is called is kind of dissolving of, of the earlier norms uh, for society mm. and also personal moral, you know, and uh, which can be a good thing in a way because you can experiment and find new ways. And uh, also, yeah. for instance, they uh, Victorians were too conservative with respect yeah. to, say, women's rights and with yeah. respect yeah. to yeah. sexuality and everything, you know. And then comes Crowley along and says, let's have group sexuality and, you know, all this. And yeah. he, you he know, went, he went and, the, the whole game it to the other end didn't he, he yes went, so yeah. so and then it become uh, totally unbalanced in in, in this yeah. other direction so of course new freedom is also uh demands new responsibility in a way and i don't think he showed that responsibility at all no no absolutely i don't think he was a very nice human being but however i mean it needed to be seen so we could have that polarity to realize what we don't want to be Exactly. And exactly. And then the, you spoke earlier on about, you know, giving up your own personal autonomy. That's what it's always been about, is it not? Mm. Yes. If they can't take it. So no matter yeah. how much black magic or whatever they do or try to hypnotize or subliminal messages, you yes. give it away freely. You do it yes. freely. Yes, and, uh, and uh, the great English healer Matthew Manning, who had had a lot of uh, occult uh, uh, and uh, esoteric, um, say, experiences, um, uh, mm. poltergeist, telepathy, mm. healing, mm. recognition, lots and lots of things. Mm. And uh, he said it very simple and beautiful. Uh, probably other people have said this as well, but I read it mm. uh, in one of his books, and he said, mm. "Nothing has the power over you unless you give it that power." Absolutely, absolutely. So I just digressed a bit, but I thought that was an interesting topic because everyone's talking about it at the moment. And to give it like a fresh perspective, because I know it's, you're a historian, you've researched this and you're qualified to speak. So we've gone past Alistair Crowley now. We're moving on. 
Um, what period uh, um, did you research John D? Because I have this thing with John D always. I understand. He's very fascinated. He was, as um, someone know, but we can, uh, what is called, uh, recapitulate. He was a magician, a Renaissance, mm -hmm. uh, English Renaissance magician, and also mathematician. And he yeah. was, uh, when there was this coronation of Elizabeth I, he was the guy who decided which date the coronation was to happen yeah. on. Uh, f from his uh, astrological speculations. Yeah. And he also uh, helped lots of uh, the British Navy and the British, uh, what is called the British fleet. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He made uh, um, what is called maps and navigation uh, devices mm -hmm. and helped uh, navigators, educate navigators. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think he made three big books about na navigation. And so. so he's a really yeah. versatile guy, this uh, John Dee. Uh, but he also practiced magic, uh, Enochian magic, uh, uh, mm -hmm. after a while he uh, cooperated with a medium called Edward Kelly and uh, mm -hmm. I'm a great fan of uh, John D himself but I'm a, more, a bit more say uh, doubtful about uh, Edward Kelly's uh, morals and intentions yes, I'm, yes. I, I think he was dubious but yes. you know Yes, Dubis yeah, first name, yes. But at yeah. least um, uh, Edward Kelly got some visions and also they received some, say, um, uh, uh, tablets uh, with letters and uh, incarnations of uh, different yeah. kinds. And so, and that is what is, say, the core of modern en Enochian magic. They also yes. is a classical Enochian Jewish tradition in the Kabbalah. Uh, but yeah. the modern uh, Enochian tradition stems from John Dee and uh, the revelations uh, say given to him and Edward Kelly and they mm -hmm. were scrying using a crystal bowl also seeing angels yes. and uh, different kind of spiritual beings and uh, there is a great book which uh, which I have uh, from his hand in a uh, facsimile here. I don't have it at hand right now, but it's uh, he writes a long, there's a long title as a, long, a truthful uh, relation of what went on, blah, 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 you know, when he explains in detail lots of these visions and also about these magic tablets. Uh -huh. And uh, these tablets with uh, invocations and, and uh, an, an alphabet, really, an Enochian alphabet uh, has yeah. been uh, become very important in parts of European uh, esoteric tradition as yeah. they as they somehow descended directly for heaven from heaven they are th uh, th those letters are thought to have uh, very strong power and even this yeah. guy crowley uh, he said you should not dabble into enochian magic or at least you should be ready to to accept the consequences if you do so um yeah, yeah. so yeah. i mean do you think yeah. i mean I, I just want to hold you there for a sec i mean um, years ago when i was studying um blah -de blah um, and I went into the Enochian and alphabet and everything and, and read, um, you know, and I'd heard that Crowley had said, do not do it. And um, nothing happened to me, by the way, I need to tell you, absolutely, and many others. Do you think that was just him saying well, don't do it? Uh, well, you, well, you know, uh, the magical tradition as a whole has this, what we can say, it's a bit, uh, it's called lopsided in a way, because uh, they are too much into gaining power, you know, and that yes. becomes a kind yeah. of ego thing. So yeah. what Crowley has said or not said, you know, I'm, as I said, uh, you should seek out other masters uh, because there are yes. lots of masters. Mm -hmm. One of the wonderful yeah. Buddhist masters just passed away, yes. the mm -hmm. great Thich yeah. Nhat Hanh, you know. So, 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 uh, you know, I, I, I'm not really interested. I read quite a lot about yeah. Crowley and of Crowley and one of mm. my say i would not say close friends but acquaintances he was a yeah. grand master in a crowley inspired magical order so you know uh, yeah I'm with, no i'm with you you're the expert yes. so i'm asking you the questions as if anyone in the audience may want to ask you so yeah, because, would you say that yeah, john d yeah. uh, no i'm sorry because this is just too exciting so we know that edward kelly was the supposed medium and maybe he had a bit but you know john d prior to um, the dubious one yes. had started to create I mean what he did for the warships the yes. maps the dates he was into numerology someone yes. was giving him the information before John D come along and it, for me you know I think you know this part with um, before John D before um, yeah, the dubious one yes. along, you know he like someone was taking the credit away he must have been connected consciously he must have been 
connected to other worldly things to get the mm. information to how the hell would he create the maps how would he create the instruments where would he get that from but you know i think my view of consciousness which uh, i would uh, like to go a bit into deeper shortly mm -hmm. uh, because that is uh, the main message of my book really is that yeah. uh, consciousness is not inside my head or in john no. d's head or in your mm -hmm. head you know it's a collective mm -hmm. field of information where yeah. other people animals and even uh, celestial mm -hmm. beings uh, yeah. may we may interact uh, through this field of consciousness you know and uh, yeah. being a, a, a very intuitive person uh, he was probably open to lots of inspiration yeah. from that field also this yeah. great uh, renaissance uh, italian re renaissance scientist uh, Cardan uh, uh, cardano i don't know how that is pronounced in english uh, but uh, uh, c r d a n o he is led, uh, he was a mathematician and also made mm -hmm. inventions for later was used in motors uh, special kind of wheel mm -hmm. uh, you know how, how to to I, I cannot go into it because my English it doesn't is matter. not uh, I understand. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Caran, uh, Carano he also uh, uh, and he get uh, what is called revelations uh, where there was some kind of uh, little spiritual beings appearing to him telling him secrets and all that kind might yeah. be that uh, John D did exactly the same but also That's just being same. Yeah, but uh, uh, whether or not it's these small spiritual beings teaching him the mathematics or he, by mm -hmm. his own ingenuity, uh, acquired these mm -hmm. insights, I, I, I'm not the one to say. No, that's but, uh, fine. It's just, yeah, I mean, for me, I've always seen it that, you know, that everyone says that, you know, Kelly was the medium. And and, and for me, when, when I was reading and learning and, you know, from my peers, I kept saying, no, he had it before. He... Mm -hmm. he he had some connection to the to the greater consciousness, to whatever, you know, Akashic records, whatever yes. you want to call it. He yes. had, and there were great people through our history that were really oh, yes. into the esoteric. I mean, Tesla was one of them. Yes. Einstein was another one that would mm. get it in the dream state, they mm. work it out. Um, so I just wanted to put out my, my truth is I think um, John Dee was a lot more powerful than what it's portrayed today it's all about edward kelly um yes. i've held you up too long on that i know so now can we come into the area through the esoteric of what has this field that you've researched and studied and you've written papers on what has this field shown you about consciousness itself well, you know, uh, my book, which I will show here, it's called A Short History of Nearly Everything Paranormal. And it's out on Amazon, both in England and in the US. And uh, so, and it won a couple of prizes in the US and been very well received both by uh, scientists, uh, uh, at least those open to these phenomena, and also mm -hmm. by, say, the more no say normal philosophy yeah, I'm with you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. so i would uh, and here i go through um uh, m mostly it's a study about uh, clairvoyance and telepathy and precognition, mm -hmm. knowing the future. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah. uh, to some extent, into psychokinesis, uh, moving things mm -hmm. with your mind, and also yeah. uh, healing. Uh, and uh, what is, say, the main thing about all these phenomena, that they seems to be connected to an extended form of consciousness, not to our ego. So yeah. I go into the traditions about this, the esoteric, we have a, a touched briefly up on here, but also psychology uh, researching these phenomena in the laboratory uh, mm -hmm. and um, uh, what I like to refer to you because there's lots of uh, back and forth yeah is parapsychology uh, true science and uh, some say because they have there was some fraud in the 1960s you know you cannot mm -hmm. never trust and blah 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 yeah, yeah, what, yeah. what I like to refer to and also quote in my book is an uh, article in uh, American psychologist and uh, for those who have studied psychology they will know that American psychologist is the most prestigious psychological journal in the world really mm -hmm. and in uh, the um, uh, in 2018 in the May issue they published an article it's called um, uh, uh, the experimental evidence for parapsychological phenomena a mm -hmm. review yes again yeah. uh, the experimental evidence for parapsychological phenomena a review and it's mm -hmm. written by a wonderful psychologist professor he is uh, mexican but he's tenured in sweden he's called 
Etzel Cardenia. And uh, mm -hmm. he is a great re uh, respected, been, uh, uh, have scholarship from uh, different American universities. And also he has published more than 300 uh, peer-reviewed scientific mm -hmm. articles. And his mm -hmm. conclusion uh, is that, yes, these phenomena are real. But mm -hmm. no, we have not yet reached a say a explanatory model that everybody can agree on. So yeah. and we yeah, but the point for me is that the phenomena are real. And then the physicists it's... and the psychologists and uh, the esoterists and the magicians yeah. and so have to work out which model is most fruitful and uh, in a most you, yeah. heuristic way can explain the, how yeah. exactly these things are working. But that the phenomena themselves are real, that is my say uh, big issue with the book and also with the article I quoted now. So, so um, a great article, and I will recommend it for everybody. Uh, yeah, and I recommend it too. And I tell you what, my love, I need to get hold of that book and read it. Um, yes. I, I need to read that book. I know the phenomenon is true because of who I am. Um, yes. You know, I, I experience the dead. Um, I experience precognition, telekinesis, telepathy, mm. All my life, and I'm not that old, but I'm a few decades now. Hey, hey. Um, hey, hey. So for me, it's my truth. I can't, you know, I don't, I'm going to put it, I'm going to be devil's advocate here. I don't need someone to prove to me that it's true. I am true. However, I do, I, I think it's wonderful that someone could put so much work into a book to mm -hmm. open up other people's minds to look at it and to and to get the psychological society to yes. review, I think is a major a major step. Yes, also uh, because there is this unhealthy div divide between uh, the, these phenomena, the extended view of consciousness, and the normal, say, day-to-day -day yeah. sign. Uh, so you can yeah. find at university. So uh, I have, in my my modest way, tried to to bridge that gap in a way. And uh, yeah. so, and we also have a Nobel Prize winners in physics that are convinced about the reality of these phenomena. For instance, yeah. Brian jo Josephson in Cambridge, uh, he won the Nobel Prize in physics in. 1973 and he, on his mm -hmm. website you can find he argues for mm -hmm. telepathy and uh, other mm -hmm. see paranormal pheno phenomena he is not yeah. a new a new age but he is uh, he studied vedanta philosophy this old indian wisdom tradition and also pr yeah. he used to practice transcendental meditation when he mm -hmm. was younger so as i said bridging the gap uh, making the gap. Uh, a more unified culture you know opening yeah. uh, the skeptics mind to the reality of these uh, phenomena mm -hmm. and also perhaps sobering up some of the most uh, too vivid uh, new age yeah. you know that is what i feel is my my task here i think and i think it's wonderful because you know um at some point in the human experience it's going to become accepted i mean we just got to look back at to you know galileo and all the rest of them and and what happened to many of them because they they had this information and mm. the church didn't like the information and they were either tortured, murdered or told to recant what they said. I mean, you're seeing a lot of that happen now. Oh, actually. Yes, yes. Um, you know, so you look at that and always something is denied, denied, um, dehumanized if it's to do with spirit. Mm. And then later on comes into play as accepted practice so for me i mean as i said i'm a few decades old for me for the future of humanity for it to be as normal as like you know yeah the mm. earth is is roundish you know ovalish it's not flat or if mm. it is i really don't care if it is flat but you know what i mean don't you <laughs> it becomes accepted practice mm. and that does take time does it not for... Yes, it, it does. That is one of, uh, I quote in my book, I quote one of the famous uh, quantum pioneers, uh, uh, Max Planck, a uh, German yeah. physicist, and he says, science progresses funeral by funeral. Yes. So the old yes. scientists have more or less to die out with their, say, fixated yes. opinions about matters, you know. Yes. And we can see that, as I said, uh, I refer to this Josephson, but also last, uh, uh, and even if you go into modern physics, you know, about mm -hmm. black holes and uh, these wormholes you get in one place in the universe to get yeah. out uh, yeah. totally others. You know, it's, uh, it's more than science fiction. It's more occult than occultism in a way. So, uh, yeah. but uh, as we, we have 
some kind of say uh, habit and also i'm a um, uh, habit of mind and uh, maps of reality that has not been updated in in light yes. of new insight uh, so 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 um, but you find uh, i refer quite a lot of that uh, in my book for instance there's a beautiful book called irreducible mind uh, written by two psychiatrists at uh, virginia university in the us and they have mm -hmm. this uh, say expanded view of consciousness that the brain is say to put it uh, in a um, say folksy way it's uh, the brain is just uh, the office where spirit works yeah. uh, yes so uh, yeah. and they uh, the the book is uh, 800 pages uh, pages uh, kelly and kelly they are a married couple about psychiatrists so that's a beautiful book that i uh, i refer mm -hmm. and that uh, that book has also uh, fared quite well in say classic scholarly journals about psychology yeah. as well so it's not just fringe uh, new age thing it's uh, it's solid science and also yeah. other i could uh, mention other works but but uh, dean raden the great parapsychologist told me that when he attends uh, conferences around uh, philosophy of mind is much more in fo focus these days than it was yeah. say in the 80s yeah. i mean or he's amazing 90s. he is absolutely amazing I've watched his you know, everything for years. Yes. I mean, he opened my mind up to a lot. And he was like a, he's like a, a forerunner for everyone to follow. And that, you're quite yes. right. Yes. Um, the oldies have to die off. They have to just yes. die yes. because they're so set in their egotistic way. I yes. mean, quantum physics itself has literally, from my, from my perspective, quantum, when I research quantum physics, it, it, I didn't need validation. I didn't need proof. But it was mm. there. Quantum mm. physics actually is the science behind what we're talking about. It explains it. Simply. Well, at least uh, I am, you know, I am uh, always try to be sober and not rush into a conclusion, but at, at least I would say it opens up to the possibility. Yes. Uh, yes. And and so, and then we have to research for many decades to somehow yeah. uh, land on that conclusion or that conclusion. But uh, well, we, what we need to do, we need to speed it up, okay? <laughs> I'm trying we my best. <laughs> you know, you speed it up. Go read, go read his book, and that'll start you. We need to speed it up because when we haven't got the decades, there's a book you've got to read this, um, and I will read it. I will. I mean, but what you've contained in your book and and the journey of the esoteric, you you beautifully narrated for us Thank is. You. Um, our ancestors knew this, did they not? Back in the day. You did refer to another gentleman that, you know, with the verdict um, history and all that. So our ancestors knew all this. Uh, which other gentleman did you think you of? just yeah. mentioned a gentleman that he was, um, I think, a doctor um, or something. Oh, I just couldn't remember his name. Um, and he comes from a background. Um, he studied the ancient Indian verdict scripts. Oh, oh yes, that was Brian Joseph. Uh, he there is uh, yes, yes, yeah. uh, and also um, he is uh, British. Uh, but in the U.S., you had at Berkeley, uh, the university in California, mm -hmm. there was a group. Uh, they called themselves the Fundamental Physics Group because uh, you know, uh, in between the wars, there was the uh, where the great physicists with Heisenberg and uh, Einstein and uh, Niels Bohr and uh, yeah. uh, the different quantum physicists, um, and they also they did not limit them themselves to just you know be in the laboratory and doing their mathematics but they were really uh, philosophers as well you know uh, yeah. okay we have some experience here what are the consequences for our worldview our view of uh, of ourselves uh, uh, our view of consciousness that mm -hmm. the quantum physicists, uh, the, the early pioneers uh, be in the uh, inter interbellum period uh, were researching. So the fundamental physics group in the 70s at Berkeley, mm -hmm. they somehow modeled themselves after those great uh, uh, physicists that, that uh, dared mm -hmm. to uh, question philosophically and not just doing mathematics. And uh, Absolutely. Because, yes, because at that time, uh, there is a famous uh, historian 
he has uh, got two doctorates, one in history and one in physics. It's called David Kaiser. And he wrote a beautiful book called How the Hippies Saved Physics. Because the mm. hippie yeah. philosophy, their openness to spirituality, which we saw yeah. in this fundamental physics group, they have really yeah. had some, say, uh, complementary perspectives to the normal mm. physics. Because at mm -hmm. uh, the academia and at the institutions at that time, uh, uh, David, uh, David Kaiser says the mantra was shut up and calculate, you know, don't yeah. dabble into philosophy and yeah, not yeah, yeah. esoteric philosophy. But uh, many of those uh, uh, from the fundamental physics group were, in fact, dabbling into philosophy and parapsychology and the philosophy yeah. in mind and all that. Most famous is perhaps uh, uh, Fritjof Capra, who uh, wrote a beautiful book in 1972, I think it's called uh, Tao of Physics, where he sees yeah. uh, modern quantum physics and uh, somehow co reach mm -hmm. it uh, together with uh, mm -hmm. uh, Eastern tradition, uh, wisdom tradition from uh, Buddhism and Hinduism. Yeah. Yes, yes. But also um, there was a woman there. We should not forget the women here because uh, uh, the ones who started really the yeah. fundamental physics group, there was Elisabeth uh, Reuscher and she was mm -hmm. a doctor in, in physics. And also there are other, um, uh, for instance, um, uh, there is kind of slightly crazy but he's also kind of genius uh, Jacques Safati and it's also you, uh, people can uh, look up the fundamental physics group on on the internet and they find lots and lots mm -hmm. of uh, excellent physicists being very open to uh, say yeah. Uh, the thought that quantum physics really revises our view on consciousness, our view mm -hmm. on space, our view on time, and mm -hmm. even pro provides some mathematics to, to 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 prove it. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you. I mean, but you know, I mean, I'm going to come back to the 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 question again. So it's got two parts to it. Um, we say our ancestors knew. Go go all the way back. I'll go back to the Oracle of Delphi, um, yes. and how she was doing a bit like John D did. Basically, oh, yes, yes, I mean, definitely. and you know, I mean, I did study that a bit as well because that's the fascination I have. It's them areas I've always, since I was young, had the fascinations. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you this question no pressure, easy question for you. Uh -huh. How come humanity lost it? Did we lose it, or was it, was it, um, the powers that be <laughs> that hid it away? Because back in the time of the Oracle of Delphi. Mm -hmm. And the times of Alexander and all of that, and you know the gods, um, it was freely <laughs> spread. It was it was part of society. Yes. What happened? What happened? A very good question, of course. And uh, what they taught me at uh, the University of Oslo when I studied history of ideas uh, was that uh, uh, never subscribe to monocausal uh, explanatory models. So. Uh, saying it in a more, say, in a daily language, it would see there will uh, be many reasons for such a thing to happen. Yeah. But uh, as you said, uh, in uh, old Greek times, you have the mystery uh, uh, mm -hmm. religions, uh, Orphism and uh, 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 the, uh, what is called uh, Ulysses, um, uh, Eleusis Mysteria, you know, Ulysian yeah. mysteries and uh, yeah. uh, Dionysian mysteries and uh, yeah. uh, Mitra mysteries and so yes, and you yeah. uh, and 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 people were more or less free to seek out to become initiated in those uh, mystery schools yeah. so that's correct but um, then uh, it seems that the romans uh, when they somehow acquired dominance in in the mediterranean region they were a bit more a bit not very much more i think but a bit more say uh, controlling than the greeks had been because they shut yeah. down some initiation uh, places for the greek mysteries but yeah. as, they were also very pragmatic so they said as long as you pay the taxes and yeah. worship ship the the caesar's genius then you yeah. can go to your mystery but do it in private and in silence please yeah. so that yeah. the roman but then they came the church you know and yeah. uh, the church is uh, a collection of many beautiful things but also as we know of many ugly things and one yeah. of the ugly things is called uh, a repression of uh, say alternative modes of perception and mm -hmm. so if you could for instance practice healing if you were inside the church 
but if you did it outside the church it would uh, easily be seen as the work of the devil and yeah. then uh, yeah and and uh, so through the middle ages the the church somehow tried to, to own the, the 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 totality of the spiritual field with the, the really nasty ugly uh, yes. heinous consequences as yeah. the burning of witches and uh, yeah. the inquisition and all these kind of things yeah. so that power play there has somehow um, I would yeah. say, n n of course, it did not uh, erase uh, these traditions mm -hmm. at all, but they went underground and mm -hmm. were practiced in secret. But uh, it was really uh, dangerous. And also, you know, um, uh, the Jews, they had their own religion, but they also mm -hmm. had the Kabbalah. And uh, yeah. they were challenged on uh, a different occasion where they had to defend their faith in public, you know. And uh, some of the earliest events where the Jews defended their, say, take on, uh, uh, they, they, they went quite well. And But later on, it was with, uh, you know, threats about execution or at yeah. least implied uh, threats, you know. So uh, yeah. being, say, um, an adherent of the Kabbalah was... Uh, <laughs> could be very dangerous for for several yeah. centuries until uh, we get to uh, this renaissance in the Quattrocento, which uh, we started yeah. this. Then they somehow uh, re-evaluated uh, the esoteric tradition and they could more yeah. safely come up from these subterranean uh, layers they had been. I mean, oh, but you could say that all the oldies died off. So that's how it seems. It all seems yeah, to need to yeah. die off. Yes, it, they all need to just die off. And so, you know, I mean, I know you can, you know, you can get someone to follow you, but they're going to be their own individual being, you know, even if they're your pupil. But you needed the oldies to die. Off. There's two yes. things I wanted to touch upon. One is Plato and one is the, the but I'll do that in a second. Remind me if I forget Plato, please. Um, the one is. So would you would you would you think or could it be who knows? we? We don't know, but we can we can have a theory. We can infer it, can't we? That I would say Jesus was part of the man. Jesus was part of one of the mystery schools. Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> this uh, Christmas, I he antagonized gave... obviously everybody. Um, with and he was very spiritual with the forgiveness, the love, and all the rest of it. Oh yes, but what yes, do you yes, think? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, and I have uh, pondered quite a lot about that. Uh, as I just started to say, this Christmas I gave my ex-girlfriend a present which was um, uh, written by two uh, social anthropologists that had went into this. Uh, and uh, they, uh, say, perceived the Eucharist to be a, a kind of psychedelic ritual from an, a, ancient uh, mystery schools. Uh, and yeah. they, they have, uh, they are professors with uh, PhDs at uni mm -hmm. American universities. So that's one perspective. Uh, you can find some of uh, uh, the Eucharist has uh, very much similarity to some of the rituals practiced in in the mystery schools. Yeah. And also, of course, this uh, you can see uh, Jesus demonst uh, demonstrates uh, telepathy, and uh, of course, he yes. was a ma he, he was a master healer. Uh, yes. And, yes, and and uh, several uh, say. Uh, feats, uh, feats that we know from uh, esoteric schools and uh, yeah. also uh, people are not so uh, aware of that but um, there had been Buddhist missionaries in uh, in Rome before mm -hmm. Christ and also yeah. um, in Egypt you can find Buddhist graves from from before Christ uh, there yeah. was a gr great uh, Buddhist Indian king about it. Uh, I think it was about 230 before Christ. And uh, his mm -hmm. name was Asuka. And he was a devout Buddhist. So he sent missionaries all over, say, the Hellenistic world, the, the Mediterranean, yeah. the uh, Asia Minor. So uh, yeah. Buddhism was quite well known, uh, at least by some seekers in that uh, period. Yeah. And, you know, this peace and love message of Jesus that uh, some people think that uh, he might have, uh, you know, the caravans and uh, and all yeah. the ships over the Mediterranean. So there was quite a lot of exchange of ideas yeah. uh, from, from the uh, whole known world. So yeah. uh, and Jesus being the brilliant ma man he obviously was, uh, would probably be uh, very well familiar with also oh, those traditions. Really. So yeah. very very often, which say, uh, is it uh, then just a product of this? Probably it's, uh, uh, it's uh, not uh, the right way to view it because say Beethoven in music, of course, Beethoven learned quite a lot from 
from Mozart, from Haydn, from yeah. Bach, and yeah. all the great going yeah. before him. But he also made his own very yeah. uh, personal and great contribution. And I think Jesus know the, uh, at least several of these other mystery schools, but he also yeah. was a great mystic himself. And he might yes. have been more than that. I will got no, we will go not into religious discussions. That is not my, no, no, my no, thing no, here. No, yeah. so 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 let's just say he he was a great spiritual teacher and might yeah. be more that will be up to people's beliefs, but uh, at least he probably knew those mystery schools and also, typically for for instance for mystery school, uh, esoteric is uh, contrasted with exoteric what is inside yes. and what is outside and yep. very often jesus teaching he says uh, if you go to the gospel of mark for instance uh, yeah. he said uh, there is he taught um, the, the multitude in 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 parables and then later inside the house he teaches the disciples so you have yeah. the exoteric that is for yeah. everybody yeah. and you have the esoteric this is for those initiated the disciples so uh, yeah. clearly he 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 molds his teaching uh, yeah. on the mystery schools uh, in, I, in many I, respects. I, I mean that's that's just my truth I, that is my truth you know through the years the decades of research and you know but also um, we could say he did magic he did magic. He yes. created things. He, I mean, that's a magician. And it's like all the other ones we've spoke of already, um, mm. you know, apart before him and after him. Um, he did magic. He did alchemy. Uh, yes, in, in some sense, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. if you are to, say, go to a university and uh, uh, write a thesis about you have to define magic and so on and so on. Yes, I'm but with you, yes. Yeah. Clearly, he used a mind over matter to put it that way. He, yes, he yeah. did. Yes, he did. So, you know, it was, it's just something I've always wanted to have a discussion about this because, you know, and, and also Christianity didn't exist when he was on the earth. It was created after him at the time when he was about on the earth and what we can find from other scriptures, gospels, um, scrolls, not the ones that the, the Council of Nicaea decided was the truth. Yes. Um, it was a different time. And then, so for me, I say, well, now I can see how the esoteric or the mystery schools was crushed come in the church. I get that. What I couldn't quite understand is what happened before. Then you said, obviously, the Romans, I I now understand. Yes, How because it, you know it's it's the kind of organized state. Uh, yeah. In, in old uh, ancient uh, Greece, you know there were lots of small city states. You know, yeah. you have yeah. Athens, you have Sparta, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have uh, yeah. you have Co uh, Corinth, you have mm. uh, yeah. So so, yeah. but uh, the Romans were quite. Uh, uh, they loved organizing things, and they were quite good at it. You can go go yeah. to Italy yeah. and Very. and yeah, you can drive on roads that Caesar Augustus uh, built 2,000 years ago, you know. Yeah, and yeah also, exactly. Yes, and also, we, you know, the still uh, the judicial system, uh, the lawyers are educated uh, uh, after principles from uh, yes. uh, Roman, Ro Roman courts. So uh, yeah. they were great organizers. And of mm -hmm. course, if they felt something to be too disorganized, then that has to be uh, yeah. put at heel. And and um, and when uh, Christianity about uh, year four hundred or there about became the say uh, the, the the Roman say institutionalized religion, then the other had starting to get harder and harder times. So uh, the Roman the Romans and then combined with the church, uh, yeah. repressed many of the mystery schools clearly. Yeah. Yes. Um, lovely. Now I'm going to thank you for that. Really interesting. Now I'm going to come back to Plato. Um, I loved Plato. I mean, I did. And Socrates, actually. Um, when I was studying the classics years ago, I can't remember half the stuff. I'm so old now. Um, I mean, um, Socrates got murdered with poison. But I'm going to go to Plato. I found it, unless it's just my perception, absolutely light bulb moment obviously when i was studying a uh, research in quantum physics when it was coming in and i just fell in love with quantum, and plato's analogy of the cave yes. i have to say it and the shadows and yes. the whole narrative mm -hmm. is bloody quantum physics i just have to put it out there the way <laughs> he did i see that 
And the analogy, and I thought, did he do it that way to hide it from the state because it was a bit far out? But he, well, um, you're aware, obviously you're aware of the analogy of the cave, aren't you? Yes, I know it quite well. I, I uh, studied uh, Plato as a special subject when I studied philosophy, so he has be, always been a great favourite of mine. Mm. Even if I don't speak uh, uh, ancient Greek, I have read uh, several of his... Uh, oh, you're, you're beautiful. I wish I could speak ancient Greek. Mm. I think it would suit me. I'm sure yeah, it would. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm sure too. No, but, but uh, this uh, parable of the cave, cave as you say, um, uh, it, it is clearly uh, it also seems to be influenced by mystery schools, uh, Orphic mysteries, uh, probably uh, mm -hmm. because uh, they know that, say, in our day to day consciousness, we are not able to perceive uh, the depth of the mysteries, and yeah. we are like those figures uh, sitting changed uh, inside yeah. this cave and seeing just the shadows of what's going on outside the cave. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah. so that is uh, our normal day to day state of consciousness. Us, but uh, through different rituals, uh, uh, through perhaps psychedelic used in a healthy way in with a good set yeah. and setting, after mm -hmm. years of meditation or by grace, mm -hmm. you can suddenly open up to perceive the mysteries yeah. directly. And I think yeah. it's uh, that is uh, why Plato used this because it's uh, very often you, get, you can say you cannot tell uh, the truth directly. You have to yeah. hint at it. And then suddenly yeah. uh, Plato has written also many letters. In his seventh letter, he says, if you really go into these matters, suddenly uh, and it's like uh, one one iron uh, you know scrape against another scraping scraping and suddenly then the spark uh, arrives yeah. and will enlighten the whole uh, <laughs> yeah. whole room uh, so uh, he writes that uh, about uh, I, i'm not quoting uh, uh, verbatim it's now okay. but but that is what yeah. how he explains it in his seventh yeah. letter so that is uh, you have to somehow uh, devote yourself to kind of mystical practices mm -hmm. of different kinds uh, you have yeah. to seek perhaps a teacher or uh, mm -hmm. so and then you can somehow lose the change and and uh, go out from mm -hmm. the cave and uh, eventually mm -hmm. directly viewed Mrs. Mm -hmm. And also Paul in, 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 uh, in the New Testament, uh, the great um, uh, Apostle Paul, he says that here we look as, uh, as looking in a mirror. If you have a mirror, you know, and the mirror mm -hmm. in ancient time, they were not as our mirrors, you know, they were quite, yeah. they could be rusty and they, you know, lots yeah. of sp uh, spots on them and so. And yeah, yeah. You, uh, yeah, and you can see the thing behind you in a mirror, but uh, he said, when we uh, are on the next level, probably through death in his perception, we should see face to face with the spiritual reality. So, it, and that is also a concept for the mystery religion in our condition here on earth we are somehow limited by our, our ego and it's yes. say, limited perspectives yeah. so yeah yeah so all right so to close the show i mean it's just been fascinating we, we've done a, a wonderful timeline um and you know i've raised the question you know how we lost the knowledge or lost the information um murdered mayhem and everything and then it comes back again and we, we just keep waiting for the old buggers to die off. Um, for me, um, believe it or not, this is my truth again. My In the last two years, I have seen the esoteric, um, magical or the alchemical, spiritual revival of mm. millions. You know, it's just happening again. Yes. Have you? Are you aware of this? And. Do you sense this as well? Uh, yes, it seems to me, for instance, as I said, uh, this uh, last year, uh, or it was uh, already, uh, no, we have uh, just got a new year. So two years ago, uh, the Nobel Prize winner of a uh, uh, Nobel Prize in physics was Sir Roger Penrose. And mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he is, of course, a very sober scientist. So you, you cannot get him to say declare too much but at least he said that uh, his model of consciousness seems to allow for precognition you know yeah. 10 years ago a normal physicist would not have said that no, and also, no. no. 
Uh, and also Dean Radin, as I quoted, uh, when he goes to, uh, to attend uh, conferences, he, he mm -hmm. said uh, that uh, more and more people are interested in philosophy, uh, philosophy of mind because uh, mm -hmm. and there has some to the forefront. It has come more and more that mm -hmm. uh, this irreducible mind, that we really don't know what is consciousness. Okay, we mm -hmm. can say this process, if you drink alcohol, mm -hmm. it influences mm -hmm. that way. If yeah. you eat uh, psilocybin, it will influence you that way and you have yeah. tired and so you can describe somehow how the consciousness works and what influences yeah. it, but what, not what it is really. The hard question, yeah. why does mm -hmm. consciousness experience appear at all? Uh, and yeah. that has somehow moved to the forefront of, uh, of the philosophy of uh, mind yeah. and more and more psychiatrists. And so I think also uh, are becoming aware that there is some really big questions we have not yeah. solved here. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's a renaissance again. That's what I'm going to yes. say. Yes. It's, it's coming back again. And, yes. and, and I we'll find try to it, get it right this time. Yes. We, no, we won't no. try. We will get it right. Yeah. Be no more, more inquisition. No, no more inquisition. I mean, they're trying to do the inquisition at of the moment. Of course, they always try. Yeah. Oh, my God. Are they shutting us down everywhere? Mm. And shadow, I get shadow banned and everything. But hey ho, never mind. Shit happens. Now, before we end, I mean, obviously, I it's been an honour to talk to you again. It is you're just so full of knowledge, and I love. I can ask you any question, and you know it, which is wonderful. And Thank you know, you. and it just resonates with me. And the area that you studied, you know, um, I look upon you as like a peer, and I think uh, maybe I should have done that. But no, I've gone the exact road I'm supposed to go down. Touched on all the fields. Yes. Um, so to end the show, let's go back to that amazing book. Hold it up. Come on. Here it is. There it it's, is. A short history of the paranormal. What you read it out, what does it say? A sweetie? short history of nearly everything paranormal. And but it's a big fat book. It's a big it fat book. It is 500 pages, but it's lots of anecdotes and entertaining and dad jokes and every kind of uh, deadpan well, well, thing that go. people would like to, to, to read. So I think it's a good read. And my name you can see here, it's Tarja G. Simonson. Tarja G. It. Simonson. Easily available on Amazon. There you go. Grab that Thank book. You. And let's all start. And uh, support the no. Let's not start. Let's give the Renaissance a boost of the mystery schools and the esoteric journey that we're all on. We're all on an esoteric journey. We're all here, spirit beings, having it. So let's do it. Thank Amen. you so much. I will bring you back again. I cannot not never bring you back. Third time <laughs> I'm going to bring you back. Thank you so much. For spending Thanks a lot, time. Gloria, for having me. Nice talking. Oh to you. no, it's, it's been a pleasure. Stay there, just stay there. Don't go. I'll have a word of you afterwards. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody. Whether you're watching live or whether you're going to watch on the replay, if anything in the show resonates with you, please take it and go on your journey and research it or get hold of his book. Please do. Um, if it doesn't, just put it to one side. The whole point is. You know, we all have free choice and free will to experience anything we want. What we can do, we can get a book. OK, we can read it and then put it down. If it doesn't interest us, we go to the next one. Don't limit your own consciousness. Don't believe everything you're told. Don't even believe me. I'm on my own journey. So is my guest. Expand your consciousness and go and find the magic of being human. And on that note... I'm Gloria, and this is Open Minds Chat Show. Until the next time, bye for now.